These are impressive images that reflect the complexity of the Syrian context, where each subregion has its own dynamics, needs, and considerations in terms of humanitarian assistance. This panel brings together responders from each of the subregions, representing the various types of operations and stakeholders. The panel will consider such issues as the challenges to deliver basic needs, issues of access and early recovery in Syria. Allow me to introduce the panelists to you, starting with the regional director of the UNICEF office in the Middle East and North Africa, Madam Adel Khodr, sitting next to me right here. Also with us is the country director of Oxfam in Syria, Mr. Mu'taz Adham, at the other end from my perspective. Next to him is sitting the Strategic Program Advisor for the Near and Middle East at the International Committee of the Red Cross, Mr. Michael Talhami. Sitting next to me is Ms. Nirvana Shauqi. She's Regional Director for Middle East and North Africa at CARE. And last but not least, I welcome Mr. Fadi Al Dairi, who is Country Director at Hand in Hand for Aid and Development, Hifad. At the end of our session, we'll be uh, listening to some remarks by Mr. Andreas Papa Constantino, who is the Director for the Neighborhood and Middle East at DG Echo. I will introduce him later on. Allow me to also say that the rapporteur for this session is the Regional Director at, the Syria, at Syria Relief and Development, Ms. Amani Qaddour. Please give our speakers a hand. Mr. Al Dairi, from an NGO perspective and taking the resilience of people into account, how do you see the shift from an emergency response to a more long term early recovery response? And what support would you need in this context from the donor community? Uh, thank you so much. It's an uh, it's interesting panel and uh, it's always a challenge when you are the last one to speak. Uh, you don't want to to maybe, but I would reaffirm the messages, I would confirm, I, would, I mean, I totally, I'm in total agreement with you. In terms of what we need, uh, I mean, of course, now it's a protracted crisis, it's an underfunded crisis. And of course, we have a, a challenge with the cholera outbreak. The, with the cholera outbreak, of course, we have a challenge. I mean, this is a wash response. It's not a health response with the cholera. And what do we do? Do we go ahead and rehabilitate the infrastructure in northern West Syria? If we do it, we always called for uh, we always called for a rehabilitation, and we were told you can only do emergency rehabilitation. And now all of a sudden we're sitting here, and the theme of Brussels Seven is early recovery. We were told in the past that rehabilitation could be under early recovery, but now it's okay to talk about it. We cannot talk about reconstruction. But of course, in the northwest Syria, where, where I'm coming from, which again, I mean, Nirvana said I will be talking about northwest Syria. I, I wish there would be a day where we can all talk about the whole of Syria, not the way as in the UN mechanism, but as in we represent the whole of Syria, all of us. We have so many people being displaced, and our aim is and challenge is to have a dignified, uh, a dignified response. And what does it mean with the dignified response? The traditional way, I think we as a humanitarian, we fail the community. We fail the affected population by kept pushing, I mean, more assistance, more food baskets, more hygiene kits. What we should have done and we failed to do so far is the empowerment of the local community, is providing job opportunities, shifting people away from, I mean, those who left Eastern Aleppo, those who left Damascus, Eastern Ghouta, Dara, and Homs, they should go back to home, but in a safe manner, in a safe and organized manner. Those who are refugees in neighboring countries, they have no choice but to be refugees. And we should not be pushing them back to Syria because it's not, it's not the right time. And I totally agree with Najat. I mean, Najat uh, said it's a political solution. Yes, it is a political solution, and there should be a Syrian, Syrian one. The response in Syria should be locally led, and we should listen to the local uh, communities. Uh, we should listen to the needs on the ground. And we have some amazing local NGOs who have been supported with the INGOs as well. I mean, it's been a great partnership. But of course, we always ask for a better partnership. 
I mean, the sky is the limit when it comes to a, an excellent partnership, and this is what we need. Uh, we also, we recently moved some families from tents into dignified shelter, and the first thing the kids did was to touch the wall. I mean, they felt, oh, that's, that feels weird. They, they were born and they grew up in tents, and that's all what they know. And for them, that was, that was a, a totally different experience. Again, what we need, Ali, I mean, you asked me what we need. We need a flexible funding and a multi-year. I mean, I know, Adele, you asked for a flexible funding, but we also need a multi-year funding. If I talk about the UN resolution, I mean, as a six-month resolution, uh, I mean, again, that's, I know it's not the avenue now, but we are unable to respond. I mean, with the, with the response, we need a longer-term resolution. Therefore, I mean, when you talk about uh, multi-year funding, uh, this is where we need, okay, when we have a pledges now, let's spend extra now so we can save in the future. Instead of like when we're doing rehabilitation, we can do rehabilitation and then livelihood, and then hopefully we can spend less in 24 and 25 because we spend extra now. Uh, so this is the kind of things we, we ask him for. Uh, I mean, I, I really liked the commissioner when he said we have to rethink how we can uh, or how we readdress the needs in Syria. And this is exa exactly what we need. If I, again, I mean, if I touch on the education, uh, when I look at the job adverts we as Hand in Hand have, and then the applicants, some of the applicants are teachers applying for the role of a security guard because they will be paid higher money or higher amount of, yeah, higher salary than they are as a teacher. And we have to readdress these things, these issues. In the northern rest of Syria, we have a huge challenge recruiting doctors and nurses. There are no newly qualified doctors in the northern part of Syria. Uh, but then again, what do we do? So we have to reinvent the wheel and find alternative solution here. Uh, uh, we also have the issue of civil documentation as well. Uh, I was speaking to some of my staff and they said to me, oh, we have four ID cards uh, to move around in Syria. And this is a huge challenge. I mean, it should be just one ID card. We are always ready. I mean, it's just uh, for us, uh, the Syrian NGOs or the, the NGO community in Northwest Syria, we were already implementing uh, like a resilience program. We implemented early recovery but under a different name uh, it was more like uh, empowerment something like i mean it's just like for us yes we have we committed and we will be we will do it uh, let me touch on uh, just take briefly on mrs kiftara what she said about the uh, w we have an issue with the uh, with the early marriage for sure and that's one of the negative coping mechanism we have for families they're resorting to early marriage and when I talked earlier about a locally led solution, we can tackle it uh, given, I mean, the local understanding of the cultures and values, but this has to be a long-term solution. We cannot tackle it with a six-month or a 12-month project. Again, multi-year funding. Uh, thank you. Uh, again, I mean, we also talk about the donors when, when it comes to the early recovery. We always talk about the humanitarian donors, but we keep forgetting the, the uh, non-humanitarian donors and the Arab philanthropists as well. Thank you. Before I set you off, please join me in thanking the excellent contributions of the speakers as well as those who participate from the room. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.